Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I pray that all of you watching are having a good Monday night so far. I wanted to come on here and give you guys a one article news update on the skyrocketing prices that we have been seeing uh, all throughout our world economy, whether it's gas prices, food prices, the cost of living, and now, as if that isn't enough, you have the price of fertilizer. And because those prices are skyrocketing, it's kind of led to a chain reaction, if you will. And it could very well have worldwide consequences. So without any further ado, this is your one article world news update for the 28th of March, 2022. I'm going to get right into this right now. The article will be linked in the description box below. As always, the skyrocketing price of fertilizer has caused a worldwide nightmare that is going to impact every man, woman, and child on the face of the planet. I think that's a very accurate way of putting it. You know, sometimes you worry about being, you know, too straightforward, you know, or people say that you're just being sensational. No, no, no. This is very, very true. When you look at all the skyrocketing prices, it could very well have a worldwide impact on everybody. All right. You will definitely feel the effects of this out of control period of inflation. Please listen to this update very carefully because it contains very important information that is going to affect you and your family. In fact, it could very well affect every single man, woman, and child on the face of the planet. You know, people have warned, a lot of experts have warned that a major global food crisis was coming, and this was within the, the past year and a half to two years. I mean, even before this scamdemic started, people were warning because the building blocks were already there for a massive period of inflation. People were warning that this stuff was coming even two to three years ago. And in recent months, Right, the authors of endtimeheadlines.org has been writing about this stuff multiple times per week. You know, a lot of people out there thought that many of us reporting on these food shortages and these skyrocketing prices were exaggerating, but at this point, the reality that we are heading into a major global food crisis has become undeniable. Joe Biden just told a press conference in Brussels that Worldwide food shortages are going to be very real. Biden said that the world will experience food shortages as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And production increases were a subject of discussions at a Group of Seven meeting last Thursday. It's going to be very real, Biden said at a news conference in Brussels. The price of the sanctions is just is not just imposed upon Russia, it's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. And Biden is definitely not alone. If you can believe it, things are already so serious in France that the government is actually considering implementing a food voucher system. French President Emmanuel Macron said his government is considering food vouchers to help middle and low-income families be able to afford to eat, calling the problem a worldwide food crisis. I want to put in place a food voucher system to help the most modest households and the middle class facing these additional costs, Macron said in an interview with France Blue Radio on Tuesday. So this would have been Tuesday of last week. And wow, was I floored when I read that. I had actually read several articles on that as well, and it just reeks of purposefully killing economies. You know, it's all to make way for that forthcoming digital currency and skyrocketing prices. Inflation is certainly a way to kill economies so that you could eventually implement that system. This isn't a joke. All right, we're seeing this play out in real time on a much larger scale than anybody thought it would. One of the biggest reasons why the outlook for the months ahead is so grim is due to the soaring cost of fertilizer. You know, people wouldn't necessarily think that something like fertilizer could cause a chain reaction, but it very well can, and it is. The American Farm Bureau Federation is telling us that in some cases, the price of fertilizer has risen 300%. 
Fertilizer is a necessity for farmers, allowing them to achieve the high yields needed to meet demand and keep their operations afloat. According to the American Farm Bureau Federation, fertilizer costs have risen as much as 300% in some areas, adding significant pressure to farmers' pocketbooks. As global energy prices continue to go higher, so will the price of fertilizer. And now the war in Ukraine threatens to make things even worse, because Russia is such a key exporter of various fertilizers, on top of, of course, being a key exporter of oil. In 2021, Russia was the world's top exporter of nitrogen fertilizers and the second largest supplier of both potassic and phosphorus fertilizers, according to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Most Americans don't understand that when we sanction other nations, such as Russia, we are also sanctioning ourselves, right? especially if we get a lot of of that stuff from that particular country that we're sanctioning, well, that obviously means that we ourselves are not going to be getting as much of their stuff, right? I'm trying to put it in layman's terms for those who don't necessarily understand how sanctions work. But most people don't understand that when we sanction other nations, such as we're doing to Russia now, we are also sanctioning ourselves. We have unwisely become very dependent on the rest of the world for so many things, and that puts us in a very vulnerable position. For the, for the foreseeable future, the price of fertilizer is going to be incredibly high. As a result, farmers all over the globe will be using less fertilizer, and this will result in reduced agricultural production. In other words, a lot less food will be grown. And in some instances, farmers that are still willing to pay for fertilizer are not going to be able to get it. In fact, in certain cases, that is now even happening right here in the United States. Corn and soybean farmer John Bakehouse faces a daunting question. In years past, he's never had to ask for what he could get or what he could apply to his crops within the usual agriculture system. But now the situation is completely shifted. For the first time, we're talking about it's simply not available Fertilizer is simply not available. Some chemicals are simply not available. The resources that this farmer, and he's just one of many farmers, the resources that they would typically use to grow and sustain their crops are simply not as available as they once were. It has to do with these skyrocketing prices and high levels of inflation. They go hand in hand. For the first time, you kind of recognize that you're standing on a three-legged stool with one of the legs starting to weaken, Bakehouse said. In all my years, I've never heard of a corn farmer in Iowa being unable to buy fertilizer. That tells you just how dire the situation is. Here we are. And Bakehouse is admitting that a lack of fertilizer would really impact the amount of corn that he's able to produce this year. If, for instance, we were only able to get half of our fertilizer needs, it would cut into the corn yield substantially, probably at least 30%, perhaps higher depending on the year, according to Bakehouse. This is very alarming to hear. Sadly, there are millions upon millions of other farmers all over the world that are being faced with incredibly difficult choices right now. The pivot can be seen in agricultural powerhouse Brazil, where some farmers are applying less fertilizer to their corn, and some federal legislatures are pushing to open protected indigenous lands for the mining of potash. In Zimbabwe and Kenya, small farmers are reverting to using manure to nourish their crops. In Canada, one canola farmer has already stockpiled fertilizer for the 2023 season in anticipation of even higher prices ahead. Meanwhile, there are other major disasters that are also threatening food production. The new bird flu pandemic that erupted inside the United States in February continues to escalate. In fact, we just learned that more than half a million broiler chickens in Nebraska will have to be put down. The Nebraska Department of Agriculture announced last Tuesday that it has confirmed a case of the highly contagious bird flu in a commercial flock of 570,000 broiler chickens and that the birds will be humanely depopulated and disposed of. In other words, they're going to be put to sleep. They're going to be killed. NDA, in conjunction 
with the United States Department of Agriculture said in a press release, the highly pathogenic avian influenza, which is HPI, was confirmed in a chicken flock in Butler County, Nebraska. Overall, more than 12 million chickens and turkeys in the United States have already died as a result of this horrifying outbreak. Needless to say, that will drive up the price of meat to even higher levels than we've already seen. On the other side of the world, colossal swarms of locusts are devouring crops in Africa once again this year. This time around, it is South Africa that is being hit the hardest. So that is what we are seeing right now on a world scene, on a geopolitical stage. That is what we are seeing as it pertains to the rise in food prices and now the skyrocketing uh, new prices of fertilizer. I mean, in some areas, they've seen well over a 300% increase in its total price. I mean, that is just insane. But that is what we are seeing right now as it pertains to skyrocketing resource prices. So that is where I'm going to leave you guys for this news update. I'm going to go ahead and pull up eSword, which is my online digital Bible program, and I'm going to conclude your news update for March 28th. So I'm going to pull up eSword here, and we are going to talk about the gospel. The gospel is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, and it reads as follows. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. That right there is how you are saved if you believe that in your heart alone. That's what it comes down to, right? It's not about your ability to do good works or good deeds or uh, follow the commandments or obey the, the Jewish law. It's not about those things. It's about whether or not you've trusted solely in Christ alone for the complete payment of your sins. Because that is truly what it comes down to is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity. He died on the cross, shedding his precious, purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins. And that's past, present, and future sins. It was all covered and washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead, and he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. By simply trusting in Christ alone, you are saved and you can know with 100% certainty that you are heaven bound and rapture ready. I'm going to read John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, which I believe tie in beautifully with the gospel presentation that I just gave to you all. John 3, 16 through 18, let's read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Again, that is what it comes down to, is whether or not you have believed in the only begotten Son of God, is death, burial, and resurrection to serve as the complete payment for all mankind's sins. Again, that's past, present, and future sins. It all comes down to that. I know I am a whosoever. I pray that all of you watching are whosoevers as well. And to finish, I'm going to go ahead and read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. I believe this is like the bow on the gift, right? I mean, it, it just ties everything in together just so beautifully. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know that grace by definition is getting what we don't deserve, which God has offered to us as the free gift of salvation. And we accept and receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, 
by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. So I pray that if you're watching this video right now and you are still in a state of unbelief, if you're a non-believer, I pray that you would make the decision to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and eternal security while you have the chance, right? Because tomorrow is not guaranteed to you. Your next breath is not guaranteed to you. There's no promise whatsoever that when you lie your head on your pillow tonight that you're going to wake up and see tomorrow, right? There's no promise of that. We have no idea when our exact expiration date is. That's why it's important that you believe on Christ now while you have that opportunity. Because believe me, you do not want to be eternally separated from Christ Jesus. And he doesn't want that for you either. He loved you enough that he would rather die than live without you. If that is not the epitome of true love, I don't know what is. So I pray that those of you non-believers watching right now, that you would make the decision to believe on Christ right now, tonight, or today, or whatever time it is, wherever you are watching this video right now, I pray you make that decision. Because our life is but a vapor. We're here one minute, we're gone the next. So I pray you believe while you're still walking this earth and have a chance. All right, that is where I'm going to leave you guys for this news update. I will see you all in the next video should the Lord tarry is coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. All right, take care.